Hello viewers of Who Died Today. It's the 19th of January 2024, and today we mourn the loss of 12 big stars who left an everlasting impact on our world. Stay tuned as we explore their legacies, from the silver screen to the music stage and beyond. Discover the profound influence they had on our lives and culture. Stick around until the end for a deep dive into their stories. Before we start, if you haven't already, hit subscribe to celebrities who died today for more updates on the lives we celebrate and remember. Let's pay homage to these icons together. Number 1. Al Cantello Al Cantello was born on June 9, 1931, in Norristown, Pennsylvania. He graduated from El Sala University in Philadelphia in 1955, where he was a two-time All-American in the Javelin. He joined the United States Marine Corps and continued to pursue his passion for throwing. In 1959, he achieved his greatest feat as an athlete. He set a new world record in the javelin with a throw of 86.4 meters in Compton, California. This record stood for two years until it was broken by Italy's Carlo Livor. Cantelo also won a bronze medal at the 1959 Pan American Games in Chicago and represented the United States at the 1960 Summer Olympics in Rome, where he finished 10th. Cantello was known for his unique diving style, in which he would throw his whole body into the throw and end in a semi-handstand. He was voted the world's greatest competitor in the javelin by Sport Magazine in 1964. He was also inducted into several halls of fame, including the LA South Hall of Athletics, the Penn Relays Wall of Fame, and the U.S. Track and Field and Cross Country Coaches Association Hall of Fame. After his athletic career, Cantello became a coach at the United States Naval Academy in 1963. He worked as an assistant for five years before becoming the head coach of the men's distance running program in 1968. He coached for more than 50 years, leading his teams to 19 conference championships and 12 NCAA championships appearances. He was named Patriot League Coach of the Year eight times and NCAA Mid-Atlantic Coach of the Year four times. Antello retired from coaching in 2018 after a remarkable career that spanned six decades. He passed away on January 17, 2024, at the age of 92. He is survived by his wife, four children, and nine grandchildren. He is remembered as a legend in the sport of javelin and a mentor to many generations of runners. Number two, Ami Vitug. Rami Vitug was born in 1937 in Floribalanca, Pampanga, to Ernesto Vitug, the dean of Philippine photojournalism. He inherited his father's passion for photography and started his career as a newsreel cameraman for Channel 5. He later transitioned to film production and worked as a stillman for Lino Braca's Tatlo, Dalawa. His big break came when he became the director of photography for Armida Seguin Reina's period drama, Miga Bilangong Birhen. This film established him as a sought after cinematographer who could create stunning visuals with natural lighting and composition. He collaborated with some of the best directors and actors in the industry, such as Nora Anner, Vilma Santos, Christopher De Leon, Sharon Cuneta, Marisol Soriano, Aga Muhlak, Lorna Tolentino, Carlito Siguayan Reina, Celso and Castillo, Loris Gulinen, and Olivia Lamassa. He worked on numerous films that became classics, such as Pagputi Injuwak, Pagjiti Mi Gaigak Salome, Haplas Paradise Inn, Kung Mahawi Man Engu Ulap, and Sayanagdata Going Pagibig. He received multiple awards and recognition for his exceptional talent, including a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Sinmadela International Film Fest in 2000, a Natatangjing Gawadurian in 2016, and a Hall of Fame Award from the Metro Manila Film Festival in 2019. Sadly, Romy Vitug passed away on January 18, 2024, at the age of 86. Naomi Vaitug was not only a master of his craft, but also a mentor and a friend to many in the film industry. He inspired generations of filmmakers and audiences with his vision and artistry. He will be greatly missed, but his legacy will live on in his films. Number three, Trini Tincher. 
Trini Tincher was born in Leda, Spain, on August 6, 1935, during the Spanish Civil War. She showed a passion for drawing from an early age, despite her family's lack of support. She moved to Barcelona in 1957, where she started working as a cartoonist for various magazines and publishers. She soon became known for her elegant and tender style, and her ability to create engaging stories for girls and teenagers. She worked mainly for the foreign market, especially for the UK, Germany, and the Netherlands. Some of her most popular series include O Tinker, The Slave of Form Threeb, The Zodiac Prince, and Emma S. in Cantadora. Trini Tincher was a pioneer of comics made by women in Europe and a role model for many aspiring artists. She received several awards and recognitions for her long and prolific career, such as the Grand Prize at the 2023 Barcelona International Comic Fair. Trini Tincher passed away on January 18, 2024, at the age of 88, leaving behind a legacy of thousands of pages of comics that have delighted generations of readers. She will always be remembered as one of the masters of the medium and a source of inspiration for many. Number four, Heinz Tesser. Heinz Tesser was born on June 16, 1939 in Innsbruck, Austria. He studied architecture at the Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna under Roland Rainer, a prominent modernist architect. After graduating in 1965, he worked in various cities such as Hamburg, Munich, and Amsterdam before opening his own studio in Vienna in 1973. He also taught at several universities in Europe and America, such as Cornell, Harvard, and Venice. Tissot's architectural style was characterized by a refined and elegant use of materials, forms, and light. He often combined geometric shapes with organic curves, creating a harmonious and dynamic contrast. He also paid attention to the context and history of the site, integrating his buildings with the surrounding landscape and culture. Some of his notable buildings include the music studio in Steinach and Brenner, the Evangelical Church in Kloster Newburgh, the Essel Collection Museum in Kloster Newburgh, the Dono City Church in Vienna, and the Hossem's Winger in Dresden. He also won several international competitions, such as the University Library in Amiens, the Synagogue in Dresden, and the Museum of Medicine in Padua. Tatar was widely recognized and respected for his contributions to architecture. He received many awards and honors, such as the Austrian State Prize for Architecture, the Heinrich Tessenau Medal, and the Grand Austrian State Prize. He was also a member of the Academy of Arts in Berlin and the Royal Institute of British Architects. Heinz Tizar passed away on January 18, 2024, at the age of 84. He left behind a legacy of inspiring and beautiful buildings that reflect his vision and passion for architecture. Heinz Tizar was a master of light and space, a poet of forms and materials, and a true architectural genius. Number five, Giuseppe Tigli. Giuseppe Tigli was born on April 5, 1979, in Visolo Predibisi, a town near Milan. He started his career at Inter, where he joined the Youth Academy. He never made his debut for the first team, but he was loaned out to several lower division clubs, such as Padova, Arezzo, Reggiana, and San Marino. In 2002, he returned to Inter but he was again loaned out to Monza, where he played for two seasons. In 2003, he was involved in a swap deal with Milan, where he signed a contract but never played a single game. He spent the next four years on loan at various clubs, such as Lanciano, Catanzaro, and Pro Patria. He played his only season in Serie B with Catanzaro in 2005-06 but he only made one appearance due to injuries. In 2008, he joined Pavia, his last professional club before retiring from football. After his retirement, he played for some amateur teams in the Lombardy region, where he was well-known and respected. Tickley was married and had two children. 
He was diagnosed with a serious illness in 2023, and he passed away on January 18, 2024, at the age of 44. His death was mourned by many fans, friends, and former teammates who remembered him as a humble, generous, and talented player. Tickley was a true example of passion and dedication for the game. Despite the difficulties and challenges he faced in his career, he will always be remembered as a part of the Italian football history. Number 6. Ray Henderson Footballer Ray Henderson was born in Walsund, a town famous for producing many footballers, on 31 March 1937. He trained as a marine engineer and played semi-professional football for Ashington before joining Middlesbrough in 1957. He spent four seasons at Boro, but only made nine appearances for the first team. In 1961, he moved to Hull City, where he became a key player for the Tigers. He formed a prolific partnership with Ken Wagstaff, scoring 54 goals in 229 league games. He also made history as the first City player to come on as a substitute and score a goal in a match against Brighton in 1965. Anderson helped Hull win the Division III title in 1965-6, scoring 13 goals in that season. He also played in the second tier for two more seasons before leaving the club in 1968. He joined Reading as a player coach, but only played five games for the Royals. He retired from playing and focused on his coaching career. He was the reserve team manager at Everton in 1975, and then became the manager of Halifax Town in 1971 and Southport in 1976. However, he could not save either club from relegation and left football in 1977. He then worked in the printing industry and lived in Boston Spa. He recovered from a serious health condition in the early 2010s and remained in touch with his former teammates and fans. Sadly, Ray Henderson passed away on 18 January 2024 at the age of 86. He was a popular and respected figure in the football community and will be missed by many. Number 7. Amnon Rubinstein Rubinstein was born in Tel Aviv in 1931 to Polish immigrant parents who belonged to the revisionist Zionist movement. He served as a captain in the IDF and then studied economics, international relations, and law at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. He received his PhD in law from the London School of Economics in 1966. He began his academic career as a professor of law at Tel Aviv University, where he became the first dean of the law school in 1968. He was a leading expert on constitutional law and authored two of Israel's key rights-based laws, the Basic Law, Human Dignity and Liberty, and the Basic Law, Freedom of Vocation. He entered politics in 1977, when he founded the Shinui Party, a secular liberal centrist party that advocated for fighting corruption, separating religion and state, and drafting a constitution. He later merged Shinui with other left-wing parties to form Merits, a dovish social democratic liberal party. He served in several ministerial positions, including communications, energy and infrastructure, and education, culture, and sports. He was a champion of democracy equality and human rights and played a key role in shaping Israel's legal and political landscape. He retired from the Knesset in 2002 after 25 years of service. He then turned to literature and published several novels. His last novel was published in 2022. He won the Israel Prize for Legal Research in 2006 and was hailed as the father of Israel's constitutional law by the Prize Committee. Sadly, Amnon Rubinstein passed away on January 18, 2024, at the age of 92. Rubinstein was a man who loved his country and never stopped working for it. He was a visionary, a reformer, and a mentor to many. He left behind a rich and lasting legacy that will continue to inspire generations to come. Number 8. Shaughnessy Barber Shaughnessy Barber was born on May 27, 1994, in Las Cruces, New Mexico, to a Canadian father and an American mother. 
He grew up in both countries, but chose to represent Canada in his athletic career. He started pole vaulting at a young age, following his father's footsteps, who was also a pole vaulter and a coach. Barber attended the University of Akron, where he won two NCAA titles and set a collegiate record of 5.91 meters. He also competed in several international events, such as the World Championships, the Commonwealth Games, the Pan American Games, and the Olympics. His breakthrough year was 2015, when he won the gold medal at the World Championships in Beijing with a jump of 5.90 meters. He also won the gold medal at the Pan American Games in Toronto with a jump of 5.80 meters. He became the first Canadian to win a world title in pole vault and the second Canadian to win a gold medal at the Pan Am Games. In 2016, he achieved his personal best and set a Canadian record of 6.0 meters at the pole vault summit in Reno. He also participated in the Rio Olympics, where he finished 10th. He continued to compete in various events until 2021, when he announced his retirement from the sport. Sadly, Barber passed away on January 17, 2024, at his home in Kingwood, Texas, from medical complications. He was only 29 years old. His death shocked and saddened the pole vaulting community and the sports world. Many tributes poured in from his fellow athletes, coaches, fans, and friends. Shaughnessy Barber was not only an incredible pole vaulter, but also a kind, generous, and humble person. He inspired many people with his passion, dedication, and courage. He will be remembered as one of the greatest pole vaulters of all time and as a beloved son, brother, and friend. Rest in peace, Sean. You will be missed. Number 9, Simon Peel, podcaster. Simon Peel was one of the original members of the team at Gadio, the UK's first and largest LGBT radio station, when it first launched in Manchester in 2006. He was a core part of the on-air team, serving both the national and the local audience. His most recent show was just before Christmas 2023. Simon was not only a great presenter, but also a technical wizard. He was instrumental in keeping the station on air with his knowledge and skills. He could fix anything with a longer cable and a roll of gaffer tape. He was always on call, reliable, and passionate about Gadio. He did it all in a voluntary capacity, believing in the value of operating an LGBTT station. Simon was also a friendly and generous person who always brought in cakes for the team and made everyone laugh with his witty and cheeky comments. He was loved and respected by his colleagues and listeners who have been sharing their memories and condolences on social media. Simon had a long and successful career in radio Starting from the early 90s, he worked for various stations, including Piccadilly Radio, Key 103, Galaxy, and Century FM. He also had a stint in Australia, where he hosted a breakfast show on Nova Fam in Melbourne. Simon was a huge fan of music, especially dance and pop. He had a vast collection of vinyl records and CDs, and he enjoyed mixing and remixing songs. He was also a keen traveler who loved to explore new places and cultures. He died while on a working holiday in Peru with his wife, Sheila, who survives him. Sadly, Simon Peel passed away on January 18, 2024, at the age of 54. Simon Peel was a remarkable man who touched many lives with his voice, his humor, and his kindness. He will be sorely missed by all who knew him. Rest in peace, Simon. Number 10, Mick Ives. Mick Ives was born in Coventry in 1939 and started cycling at the age of 12. He soon developed a passion and talent for the sport and went on to compete in almost every cycling discipline, including road, track, time trial, mountain biking, and cyclocross. He represented Great Britain internationally and won 81 British championship titles and eight World Masters cycling titles. He was also a team manager, team founder, and a mentor to many young cyclists. Mick Evies was not only a champion, 
but also a pioneer and an adventurer. He was the first pensioner to complete the Tour de France route solo in 2005, at the age of 65, raising PS 20,000 for charity. He also completed the Giro d'Italia route solo, in 2017, at the age of 78, proving that age is no barrier to cycling. He was always looking for new challenges and ways to inspire others. Mick Ives was a true cycling legend who dedicated his life to the sport he loved. He was admired and respected by his peers, his rivals, and his fans. He was a generous, humble, and charismatic person who touched the lives of many people. He was a hero to many and a friend to all. Sadly, Mick Ives passed away on January 19, 2024, at the age of 84. Mick Ives died peacefully in his sleep, leaving behind his wife, Sheila, and his daughter, Angela. He will be greatly missed, but never forgotten. His legacy will live on through his My Racing team and club, and through the countless cyclists he inspired and supported. Number 11, John Hurst Footballer. John Hurst was born in Blackpool, Lancashire, on 6 February 1947. He joined the youth system for Everton, making his first team debut in the 1965-66 season. Italy a striker, Everton manager Harry Catterick converted Hurst into a centre-half, a position in which he appeared in the 1968 FA Cup final. He formed a solid defensive partnership with Brian Laybone the club captain of Everton, at the time. Hurst holds a unique place in Everton history as the first player ever to be introduced as a substitute in a league match for the club, replacing Fred Pickering in August 1965. He also scored the penalty kick that secured the FA Youth Cup for Everton in 1965, the first time the club won the trophy. Hurst's finest hour came in the 1969-70 season, when he was an ever-present in the Everton team that won the league title with a record 29 wins and 66 points. He also contributed five goals from the back, showing his attacking prowess. He also won the 1970 uh, Charity Shield with Everton, beating Chelsea 2-1. Hurst was transferred to Oldham Athletic following the 1975-76 season where he played for five more years before retiring. He remained in the game, working as a coach at Everton and as a scout for Manchester City, then managed by his former teammate, Joe Royal. He also worked as a scout for Blackburn Rovers. Sadly, John Hurst passed away on 18 January 2024 at the age of 76. John Hurst was respected as an impeccable professional who offered class and consistency in equal and ample measure. He was also a gentleman who instilled values and standards into the young players he coached. He was a champion of the club he loved throughout his life, and he will be sorely missed by the Everton family and the football community. Number 12, Orietta Grassi. Orietta Grossi was born on June 20, 1959 in Rome, Italy. She started playing basketball at a young age and soon showed her talent and passion for the sport. She joined the Fiat Torino team, where she played for most of her career and won one Italian championship and one European Cup. She also played for other teams such as Algida Roma, Stelle Marina Ostia, and Bori Poglia. Orietta Grossi was a member of the Italian national team that qualified for the first official women's basketball tournament at the 1980 Summer Olympics in Moscow. She wore the number 12 jersey and played in all five games, scoring a total of 29 points. Italy finished sixth in the tournament behind the Soviet Union, Bulgaria, Yugoslavia, Cuba, and Canada. Orietta Grossi was known for her height, strength, and shooting skills. She was a versatile player who could play both as a center and as a forward. She was also a leader and a mentor for her teammates, especially the younger ones. She was respected and admired by her opponents and fans alike. Orietta Grassi retired from basketball in 1991 after playing for more than 20 years. She then became a coach and an instructor for young players. 
sharing her experience and passion for the game. She also remained active in the basketball community, attending events, and supporting causes related to the sport. Orietta Grossi passed away in January 2024 at the age of 64. After a long illness, she left behind a legacy of achievements, dedication, and inspiration for generations of basketball players and lovers. She was honored by the Italian Basketball Federation and the Olympic Committee, who expressed their condolences and gratitude for her contribution to the sport. Orietta Grossi was a remarkable woman who lived and breathed basketball. She was a champion, a pioneer, and a role model for many. She will be remembered as one of the best players in the history of Italian and European basketball. As we conclude this heartfelt journey through the lives of 12 big stars who bid us farewell today, we hope you've gained a deeper appreciation for the indelible mark they left on our world. Their legacies will forever echo in the halls of fame. If you found this tribute meaningful, don't forget to show your support by liking this video, sharing it with fellow enthusiasts, and commenting below with your thoughts on the incredible contributions of these icons. For more exclusive updates on celebrities who've left an impact on our lives, make sure to subscribe to Celebrities Who Died Today's and hit the notification bell. Your subscription ensures that we can continue to honor and celebrate the memories of those who've shaped our cultural landscape. Thank you for joining us on this emotional journey. Until next time, remember to cherish the moments and the legacies that live on in our hearts. Goodbye.